Okay, so now that we're all set up with iOS and we have this running in an iOS simulator, we're gonna be doing the same for Android. It's great to be, uh, because it's really nice to be able to develop on a simulator. I mean, it's nice to be able to develop on a real device, but not everyone has every device. So the simulator is a great way to get up and going. Now, to do this, we need several things intact first. Well, we need is the Android Studio application here, which is basically Xcode for Android, if you've ever used Xcode. In addition, it also gives us the ability to download things like the SDK, which we'll need, and the Android Virtual Devices Manager. After we have those, we're gonna have to grab an older version of the Android SDK to get things going. We're going to need to create a virtual device and then from there it should be good to go so let's go ahead first things first let's click download android studio at the time of recording this version uh this video it looks like the current version is 2.3.2 .2, and this is going to download a large disk image for us it's like 430 megabytes so once more uh we're going to be hanging out while something downloads the funny thing about React Native is this is the fast way to get going with everything. And most of the time is just sort of sitting and waiting for things to install. So I'm gonna pause this recording and get back into it after this is finished downloading and we'll pick up there. Okay, and just like that, our download is done. And we're gonna click on this disk image to open it up so that we can install Android Studio. So remember, this is step one here. We're simply going to drag Android Studio into our applications, and then I'm going to open up my applications. Waiting for this to transfer over. All right, and now we can head over and look for Android Studio and open this up. Let's click open and if you have a previous version installed, you can use the previous version. I'm gonna click this, I do not have a previous version or I do not want to import my settings. And Android Studio is going to fire itself up. And now we're at the welcome to Android Studio menu where we can click next, close out of this. And now we're going to select custom when it asks us to uh, what type of installation settings. Now to keep things a little bit easier to read, I'm gonna use the IntelliJ theme. We're gonna click next. Now, we're going to want to make sure that everything here is installed. For some reason, it looks like the Performance Intel X HAXM is already installed, so this is not letting me check this, but if it isn't installed, you're going to want to check this. We we'll also want to make sure we install the Android SDK, the SDK platform, and the an Android virtual device. And now we're going to click Next, and let's click Finish, as this installs all the stuff we need. So once more, we're gonna have to uh, do a little bit of waiting while this installs. After this gets fired up, we're then going to need to install some more SDK stuff. That way we get the right build tools to function with React Native. Then after that, we're gonna create our device for our virtual device manager. And then we're going to uh, get fired up and get our hello world up and running. Okay, so it looks like everything is finished here. We can click finish. And now we want to be doing a little bit more here. So we're going to click this configure and we're going to click SDK manager once again. Now, the reason why we need to do this is because we need to get a specific version of the Android SDK build tools. Okay, so from the screen, we want to click show package details. We want to be looking at Android 6.0 Marshmallow. So there's a bunch of new ones, but we want to be looking for 6.0 and we want to select Google APIs. We want to select platform 23, sources for Android 23. We want to select the x86 Atom 64 system image and we want to select the Google APIs. Uh, system image, Atom64 system image, the one at the bottom right here. Next, we want to select SDK tools up top. And again, we want to make sure show package details has been checked. And we want to be looking for SDK build tools, which is right here. The version we're looking for is 2301. So 2301, which is 2301. Now we could go ahead and click apply. Now let's click okay. Let's click accept, next, finish. 
and let's just wait for this to download. Okay, and let's click finish. Okay, so after that is all installed, you need to make sure that you have your stuff under Android 6.0 checked as well as the 2, uh, 2.3.0.1 version here checked, and we're gonna click OK. Now, second to last, we need to add in our Android Home to our Bash profile. Now, I'm not using Bash, or I haven't been, but this will be easier to just use Bash. If you aren't using Fish or ZSH, then this should be uh, totally familiar. And what we want to do is we want to go ahead and find our profile file. So if we head into our user directory, we're going to look for bash profile, which is .bash profile. If you do not have invisible files turned on, then you're going to want to make sure there's a billion tutorials on that. So you can always just Google invisible files OSX. Now what we want to look for is a .bash profile. Now if you do not have this file, you can create it. It's .bash underscore profile. I'm going to open with just a simple text editor. I'm going to bump up the font size a whole lot so we can see this nice and big. And really what we need to do here is add some lines. If you were to head to the React Native page, which is facebook.github.io slash react hyphen native, we can head to this get started and then there's a configurer for Android. Scroll down and what we're going to be looking for is this line right here. So this is what we want to add to our bash profile. Now here we want to make sure some things are correct. First thing I'm going to do is paste this in here. We need to make sure that the SDK is actually available at this path. So what we want to do is look for it at our home library. Then we want to look at Android SDK, which it's here. Now I can save this and we can close this file. Okay, so this is a little bit more involved than just opening up Xcode, but it's quite all right. What we want to do now is we want to start the Android virtual device, which as you can see is right here. So how do we get into this? Let's head back to Android Studio and let's click configure once more. Now the next thing it wants us to do is start a new AVD, which is a new Android device. Now, unfortunately, we can't really get to that too many ways, right? We can check for updates, we can look at preferences and stuff like that. But let's see if we can get there just by typing in AVD. And as you can see here, we're getting to things like our key maps, but this isn't going to allow us to actually open up the AVD, which is unfortunate. So we're gonna have to click start a new project. We can just hit next through everything. Next, next, finish, okay? Like you don't have to even pay attention to any of that stuff. We're just trying to get to the actual interface here for Android Studio. Again, it's unfortunate that we can't get to it without that, but that's just the way it is. Okay, let's close out this tip here. Like I said, we're just trying to get to this device manager, which we can get to by this little purple icon that looks like a phone with an Android head poking out on it. And we can click this. It's gonna open up our virtual devices. And we can make a whole bunch of different Android devices. That's one of the benefits of Android and their, their developer ecosystem, right? We're not just working on an iPhone or several different iPhones. There's a whole ton of different types of Android phones. So we can really have a lot of ability to customize our device here. And unfortunately, we don't want to customize one right now. We just want to edit. So we're going to select our virtual device and click edit this AVD. And then here, all we need to do is click show advanced settings. We want to make sure that the target for the operating system, let's go ahead and click change, is going to be our marshmallow here. So let's just scroll down. We want to look for level 23 and we're going to be using the x86-64. Then we can click OK. Let's click finish. And then we can click yes to the dialogue. This is just going to wipe it. And now what we can do is hit the play button, which is going to fire up an emulator. So this emulator is going to pop up right now. Okay, we can click got it. And now we have our emulator up and running. Okay, so now let's go ahead and let's head back to our command line. And we're going to make sure that inside of our tip calculator, we can click got it. And now we have our emulator up and running. Okay, so now let's go ahead and let's head back to our command line. We're gonna to wanna to make sure we're inside of our tip calculator and we can type npm 
run Android. And that's going to start up the Packager and hopefully get this going on our emulator. Now, after we run this command, you can see that we're getting the same sort of stuff we were getting before. And if we head to our emulator, it's going to say, please enable permit drawing over their apps and click OK. And just like that, I'm going to tell Expo to permit drawing over other apps. And we can close this out, I believe, and just actually open up the Expo app. Let's scroll down and select Expo. And let's select our tip calc. You can see it's building our JavaScript bundle. And we should be able to see our hello world here in just a second. Okay, and it says you can pull down to show the Expo menu. I'm going to say no thanks. You can see I can pull down if I want to get to the Expo menu. Other than that, I have a Hello World right here, just like in our iOS app. So this is going to be really super helpful because now what we have here is an Android device. We have this emulator up and running and we can start programming a React Native app on Android. Now I should note that there are a hundred things that could go wrong in this process. So maybe you're using a different shell, right? Maybe you're using something Something like fish or ZSH and where you're storing your profile information is incorrect and you know like I had to even use bash here because that just made it easier in addition you could also be getting a handful of errors that are resolved simply just by running the command again believe it or not but what you want to do is if you're having an issue if you're having uh, one of these errors, first things first, Google it, React Native. You'll, you'll get an answer 99% uh, of the time. Other than that, you can always post your issues and solutions in the comment for this video. I think it will really help because, like I said, there's just too many things that could go wrong in this process of getting set up for me to be able to cover every single little thing. But just like that, we have our Hello World up and running. So now that we have this up on an Android emulator, we're going to be able to start actually developing some real React Native native code. It's going to be really super fun, and we're going to build a real life project. Uh, the Android version is going to be using Material Design. The iOS version is going to be the, using the Human Design guidelines, and we're going to have this thing looking really super nice. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.